Good morning, Geometry Honors students. So this one is sections 1.2. So the title is uh, Measurements of Segments and Angle. So the objectives for today's lesson, it's measuring segments and angle. Number two, conversion of degree, minutes and second. And number three, recognizing congruent angle and segments. So let's just record that the number line right there. So the number line, it shows that zero positive number on the right, negative number on the left. So in order to find out the distance of the line segments from C to A, you just want to measure that from one position to another position. So this one is about one unit. So segment C, E, then you can just measure that from negative 7 to negative 4. So that's three units. And then B, D, also showing that negative 1 to 0, so it's one unit. Okay, so now let's look at that, some of the... Okay, so let's just refresh more angle stuff. Okay, so the first one, if see the ray that's being going through tilt it like this and then it's horizontal so this one is considered an obtuse angle so obtuse angle which means that it's greater than 90 degree but it's less than 180 so for the angle here it's less than 90 degree I mean greater than 90 degree but it's less than 180 degree and then this one here is supposed to be showing the little square symbol so anytime they see like two line segments or two rays they're kind of perpendicular so that means the angle is always 90 degree and then for this one, so this one is kind of tilted, so it's less than 90 degree. So this one is considered an acute angle. 90 degree, it's called a right angle. And this one also is obtuse. So acute angle, that means it's less than 90 degree. But it's greater than zero. If you see the straight line like that, that means it's a straight angle. So for the straight angle, so the measure of the straight angle is always considered 180 degree. It's flat. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have for this lecture. So now this one's getting a little bit complicated. So solve the following variable. So let's say that we do have a trapezoid, okay? And this one's showing that given segment AD, it's congruent to segment BC. And also segment AC is congruent to segment BD. So basically what this one is saying that congruency, congruence that shows the line segments, they're equal to distance. And also they do have the exact same size, the exact same kind of lineup. Okay? So AD, BC, since we do know that they're congruent, so that means AD is the same as the measure of BC. So basically plug in the expression, so we got 3x plus 5, so that equals 3 plus 5x. And then from here, so we just want to solve for the equation algebraically. So 3x minus 5x, which is negative 2x. And then 3 minus 5, then that would be negative 2. So x will be considered 1. Okay, so just solve for the variable. And then the other one is quite similar. So AC, we do know that is congruent to segment BD. So basically segment AC is equivalent with segment BD. Okay, so we just want to set that 4y squared plus 1 equals 3y squared plus 2. So 4y squared minus 3y squared, you'll get y squared. 2 minus 1, you'll get 1. And then it's a quadratic, so the way to solve for the quadratic, so this one we can take the square root both sides. So you might be saying that y could be plus minus 1. That's right. Positive, negative, because that it's a quadratic. So the highest power is 2, so that means it guarantees that we do have two solutions. You can always plug in a number back to the original equation and check your work. Again, that step is just considered optional. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have for this. So this one is getting more sophisticated. So the diagram with a line of going through the origin. So given that angle CID, so CID, it's congruent to angle DIE. Okay, so DIE which is this angle right here. So those two angles are congruent. And one thing that we know this line AE is perpendicular to line CG. If you see the upside down T, that means perpendicular. So perpendicular, as what I mentioned last time, so two lines or two rays, so basically it forms a 90 degree angle. It's a right angle. So line AE right here, it's perpendicular to line CG. So that means this angle right here, it's 90 degree. And same as the other one, right down the bottom here. 
Okay, so line BF is perpendicular to DH. So BF is perpendicular to DH. So that means, so this two angle, right? Well, this angle here, it's also 90 degrees. Okay, so find the measure of angle AIH, okay, so AIH and angle AIF, okay, so AIH, let me use different color, put a mark. So AIH, we're looking for this angle, and also we're looking for the measure of angle AIF, so AIF will be this angle here. Okay, so let's find out that the measure of angle AIH so you may notice that this one is 90 degree and also this two angle they're congruent so it looks like that the line AE will be considered a angle bisector so angle bisector that means it goes through the 90 degree and it cuts off the angle into half if this angle here is 90 degree so half of it then that will be considered 45 degree okay so angle AIH is 45 degree Another way you can show the word, you can just say that 90 divided by 2, so 45 degrees. And then AIF, AIF, this one consider the sum of that, the Q angle, AIH, with that, the 90 degree angle. So once you combine them together, so this one is 45 plus 90 degree. So that's going to be an obtuse angle, so which is considered 135 degrees. Okay? So now, let's see what else that we have for the rest of this. So what are the restrictions of X? The restriction, that means you want to find out the range or the domain of X. So domain, as what you guys learned from Algebra 1, is the possible X value. And range, that would be the possible Y value. So as we can see that the diagram showing it's an obtuse angle. So that means 2X minus 4, it should be bounded right between 90 degree and 180 degree. Well, because that obtuse angle is always greater than 90 degree, but it's less than 180. So the way to solve for this inequality, so basically we just want to add 4 on both sides, or 3 sides. So we got 94, it's less than 2x, it's less than 184. And then what you need to do next, you want to divide it by 2. So basically just solve for the compound inequality algebraically. So half of 94, you'll get 57. Well, let's see. No. It's actually 47. Excuse me. So it's 47. It's less than x. It's less than 92. So the value of x, so the restriction, it's bounded in between 47 and 92. Okay? So here's another example. So the diagram showing that ray DA is perpendicular to line BC. Okay, so angle ADB, it's 5x plus 3y, so ADB, which is 90 degree, so that means this angle is 90 degree. And also angle ADC is 2x plus 4y, also this one shows the perfect square s symbol, so this one is what, 90 degree as well? So going back to what we did in Algebra 1, so this one is considered a linear system equation. So in order to solve for this linear system equation, so you want to use elimination or substitution. Okay, so now let me put this out. So basically we just set up this system here. And then we just want to solve for this system. Okay, so let me put it right here. So the way to solve for that x and y, so you can find out the least common multiples of 5 and 2. So we can get rid of the variable x, or we can find the least common multiples of 3 and 4 to get rid of that variable y. So 5 and 2, least common multiple would be 10. So in order to get that 5x to 10x, we need to multiply the first equations by 2. So 2 times 5x, which is 10x. 2 times 3y, then that will be 6y. 2 times 90, then that it's 180. And then for the second equation, so similar to what we have done here, so in order to get that to the least common multiple, so we need to multiply the second equation by 5. So 5 times 2x, 10x, 5 times 4y, which is 20y, and then 5 times 90, which is 450. So again, just name the equation, first equation, second equation. As you can see that, it's the same coefficient with the variable, so basically we can subtract. 
So 10x minus 10x got canceled. 6y minus 20y, which is negative 14y. 180 minus 450, so this one turns out to be negative 270. Okay? And then the rest of this, we just want to divide it by negative 14. So now, from here, we can solve for y. So divide it, so this one, and yeah, let's see, is that divisible? Negative divided by negative, which is positive. So 1 over 1 times 14, 14, subtract. So you'll get 13, 130. And let's see, how many times does that 14 go into 130? Looks like it's not divisible. Okay, let's see, 5. Okay, so that'd be kind of small. Okay, so let's see, 6 maybe, or 7. So if you find out things that's not divisible, so basically this one you can just leave it as an improper fraction. So 270 over 14, so this one once you reduce it, it's 135 over 7. Okay, so 135 over 7 for y. Okay, so this one, it is a weird number. And then the other one, in order to solve for x, we just want to plug in the number back to the original equation. So plugging back the number to the original equation, so it looks like equation 2 would be easier to evaluate. So 2x plus 4 times 135 over 7 equals 90. Okay, so this one solve for x, so we got 2x, so plus, so 4 times 5, 20, 4 times 3, 12, plus 2, 14, 1 times 4, plus 1, 540 over 7 equals 90. And for those you might be wondering, I don't want to deal with the fractions, so another way you can do it, multiply everything by 7, so we got 14x plus 540, and okay, multiply everything by 7. So 7 times 90, 630. So everything turns out to be integer now. So 14x, so 630 minus 540, we'll get 90. And then divided by 14. And again, looks like this one is not divisible, so reduce. By 2, so 45 over 7. You can always plug in the number back to the original equation and check your work. Okay, so x and y the way you solve for the system. Okay, so now going back to what we have for the template. Okay, so for the next page. So conversions, degree to minute. So anytime that I see that one degree, so kind of like the clock, the time, you know, one degree is considered 60 minutes. So one minute, it's about 60 seconds. So those are the unit we used to use for measuring angle. So like 65 degree, 65 and 250 degrees, so this one can be written as 65 degree. To convert that to fractions degree to minute, so it's 2 over 5 times 60 for the minute. Okay, uh, it's one apostrophe for the minute. Second would be double apostrophes. So 2 fifth times 60, so 5 goes into 60, which is what, 12 times? So we got 65 degree and 24 minutes. And the other one is quite similar, so 34 degree. So for 0.6, you want to convert that to minute, so multiply by 60. So we got 34 degrees. And then 0.6 times 60, then you'll get 36 minutes. Okay? So now, what about this one, changing the following to degree, all to degree. So 140, that's already in degree. So leave it like that. So in order to convert that minute to degree, so divide it by 60. And then for that seconds to degree, we need to divide it by 3,600. So it's going to be improper fractions or regular fractions. And then the rest of that, we just need to combine them all together. So 20 over 60, then you'll get one-third. 30 over 3,600, so let's see. Cross out the zero, divided by three, top and the bottom, so we got one over 120. Okay, so add all those fractions, integers together, so we do have 140, least common denominator, so it's 120, 
So multiply by 40, top and the bottom. So eventually, it's going to be considered 140 and 41 over 120 degrees. Mixed fraction. And the other one is quite similar. So 24 degree, it's already in degree. So 40 divided by 60 plus 6 over 3,600. Okay, so add them all together. Reduce, so we do have 2 thirds. And then this one here, we got 1 over, so 3,600 divided by 6, so we do have 600. Least common denominator, which is 600. Multiply by 200 top and bottom. So eventually, we do have 24 and 401 over 600 degrees. Okay. So that's it, and thank you for watching the video today. So again, any questions, any concerns that you have, feel free to put in comments, okay, on the YouTube channel, and also try to rewind or fast forward to the part of the lesson that you kind of struggle. Okay. So thank you for watching the video today. I'll see you next time.